Ubuntu, the distribution that, for some reason, everyone in the Linux community seems to hate. But why is that? Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. In this video, we're going to talk about Ubuntu. Now, I know some of you may not like Ubuntu, and that's one of the great things about the Linux community. We have all kinds of distributions to choose from, so if one distribution doesn't suit our fancy, we could always choose a different distribution and ignore the ones that we don't like. But for some reason, though, it seems like some people just really love to hate Ubuntu. So is Ubuntu bad? Is it a problem? Is it a horrible distribution? Is Canonical the company that makes Ubuntu evil? Well, those are some of the things that we're going to talk about in this video. But overall, I'm going to give you guys my opinion about Ubuntu, as well as why it receives so much hate in the community. Now, before we get started, I do need to give you guys a disclaimer. When it comes to Ubuntu, I write books on Ubuntu Server. So that does mean that I do generate revenue on Ubuntu. But what I'm going to do is give you my honest and unbiased opinion about Ubuntu, which means if I think that some of the things that they're doing are wrong, well, I'll let you know. And that's actually the main point here. As we talk about the different things that people will dislike in general about Ubuntu, I'm going to let you guys know what I think is great about it, as well as what is not so great. There are some things that Ubuntu can improve on, and we're going to talk about that in this video. So first of all, why exactly is a lot of people hating on Ubuntu in the Linux community? Well, I get asked every now and then why this is the case, but the thing is I can't really give you guys one answer because each and every person that happens to dislike Ubuntu dislikes Ubuntu for their own reason. Now, regardless of whether or not you like or dislike Ubuntu, it is a fact that it's very popular. It has a huge footprint on servers as well as laptops and desktops. Sure, you may not find as many Ubuntu installations as Windows installations, that goes without saying, but when it comes to Linux distributions, Ubuntu is among the most popular. And one of the reasons why I think some people dislike Ubuntu is because if something is super popular, it's a really good target for hate. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that everybody that dislikes Ubuntu dislikes it solely because it's popular. That's not true. But I do think some people hate it for that reason. Another reason why some people out there might dislike Ubuntu is because it's owned by a company. Now, for some of you, that might not seem like a big deal, but to other people, that's a huge deal. And the reason for that is some people prefer community distributions. For example, Debian is a community distribution. So there's no company backing Debian and because of that, you don't have to worry about a company making a really stupid decision that pisses off all of the customers. Debian is a community project, so any changes that are made in Debian have a process that they need to go through in order to be implemented into the distribution. On the other hand, Canonical is the company that owns Ubuntu and funds Ubuntu, so of course it's going to make some decisions, some company decisions that are best for the company that might not always be best for the user. For example, snap packages. That's something that we're going to talk about later in this video, but that is something that Canonical has decided to implement that not everybody is happy about. So some people that dislike Ubuntu might dislike it because of some of the decisions that they've made or the company that's behind Ubuntu has made, and not all of those decisions are going to set well with everyone. Now, another reason why some people might really hate Ubuntu or very much dislike it is because they might have had a negative experience with it on their hardware. Now, that's a pro and con of Linux in general. I mean, Linux runs on many different devices, but that doesn't mean that it's 100% compatible with everything. Compatibility varies from one device to another. So if you have a distribution that works well on your computer and Ubuntu doesn't, then I guess it makes sense that you're not going to like Ubuntu. And that's more of an edge case because not every piece of hardware out there is going to be compatible with every distribution of Linux. So I feel like that's one complaint that we can't really hold against Ubuntu. I mean, yeah, it sucks if it doesn't work on your device, but is that really Canonical's fault? Often the problem is proprietary hardware, not the actual software that you're using. And that's especially true when it comes to Linux. So I suppose the next question then is, should you hate Ubuntu? Well, should you? I mean, if you overhear a colleague talking about how bad they think Ubuntu is, or somebody on Facebook says it's garbage, does that mean that you should also avoid it? Well, actually, I'm a fan of coming up with my own opinion after trying something rather than simply taking someone else's word for it. Now, if somebody was to give you a reason why they dislike Ubuntu, 
If you also feel that reason resonates with you as well, then yeah, Ubuntu might not be the distribution for you. But what I see very commonly in the Linux community is toxicity. For example, somebody says Ubuntu is garbage, which is absolutely not true. And it's not true because there's countless people that enjoy using Ubuntu every day. Sure, you may or may not like Ubuntu yourself, and people that you talk to in your circle might also dislike it. But just because you or one of your colleagues doesn't like Ubuntu, that doesn't actually mean it's a fact that it's not good. The only fact here is that that individual themselves, well, they don't like Ubuntu. And the thing is, that's okay. Nobody has to like anything. I'm not going to make a case in this video that you should like Ubuntu, that there's nothing wrong with it. I'm not going to say that at all. Your opinion is valid to you, and that's the thing. If you communicate the fact that you dislike Ubuntu, it's important to phrase that in a way that's not defeating towards someone else. It's better to say, I don't like Ubuntu, or I think Ubuntu is trash, rather than saying something like Ubuntu is trash. Unless you're prepared to, you know, back that up with some sort of proof or a study that proves that it is in fact trash, then that's not really something that you can say. I mean, considering that Ubuntu has a very large footprint on servers, and countless people run it on laptops and desktops as well, then it's obviously not garbage, because if it was, then nobody would be running it. But I think that one of the issues with Ubuntu is Canonical. Again, Canonical is the company that owns Ubuntu, that funds Ubuntu. So you could say that Ubuntu is not really a community project, although yes, community members can definitely contribute to Ubuntu, but its direction is controlled by its company. And that's why I get a little annoyed when I see people complaining about Snap Packages. Now I'll talk about whether or not I think Snap Packages are good shortly, but right now, they exist, and not everybody is happy about that. The thing is, Canonical made a decision to default several applications to Snap Packages. And the thing is, as much as most people are probably not going to want to hear this, they're well within their rights to do that. I mean, think about it. Canonical owns Ubuntu. They could do with it anything they want. It's their distribution. So I feel that the reason why I think it's ironic when people complain about Snap Packages is because those same people, they decided to use a distribution that is run by a company, so they should absolutely expect company shenanigans with the distribution. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not advocating for snap packages. I'm not saying that you should absolutely love them and there's nothing wrong with them. But the point is, if a distribution is owned by a company, and then someone decides to use that distribution, then in my opinion, they forfeit their right to complain when a company decides something for the distribution that they don't like, because they made the decision to be okay with the fact that a company runs a distribution when they decided to use it. For those individuals, I would recommend something like Debian if they don't like the direction that Ubuntu is going in, or any of the other distributions, but I think it's really strange when people decide to continue using Ubuntu while at the same time complaining about it. It just doesn't make sense. Now I mentioned snap packages several times, so I feel like I should just get that out of the way because right now that's a very big topic around Ubuntu, and it's also a reason why a lot of people have decided that this distribution is not for them. But first of all, what do I think about Snap Packages? Do I like them? Do I think you should like them? Are they a good idea? Well, let's talk about my opinion on that in particular. Now, the thing is, I have a very mixed opinion when it comes to Snap Packages. When you look at the technology and the reason why it exists, Snap packages exist for a very important reason. I mean, Canonical or any other company, they're not going to spend a lot of time developing something if there's no reason for the thing that they're developing to exist. There's absolutely a reason for snap packages to exist. They do serve a very important goal. That doesn't mean that just because snap packages are important that everyone's going to like them, but it is what it is. It exists for a reason. And what reason is that? Well, snap packages are a form of universal package and I actually made an entire video about this very subject. But the idea is that a universal package is a package that a developer can compile one time, and then every type of distribution out there that supports that particular type of universal package, those distros will also be able to use that package as well. So think about it like this. If I'm a developer, and I have this awesome application that I want to release to the Linux community, maybe it's something that wouldn't normally be available to the Linux community, I might want to look into making it available so that way I can have the Linux audience using my app as well. Now, one way that I might do that as a developer is I might decide to compile or create an RPM package, but not just one RPM package. I mean, I have to create one for Fedora, another one for Red Hat, one for SUSE, and then a dev package, but not just one, one for Debian, and then also one for Ubuntu. There are differences between the two. 
I might also package it for CentOS. I might even package it for Arch Linux as well. There's countless distributions out there. But if I'm a company, would I have time to create a package for every distribution type out there? Probably not. A lot of companies might give up on that and actually decide to not target the Linux platform at all. So universal packages in general are a great idea. Now, of course, there's some controversy about universal packages in general that I won't talk about here. I have an entire video about that that you could check out. But when it all comes down to it, whether or not universal packages are a good idea for you or are useful to you depends on your use case. I've had some people say that they hate snap packages. There's nothing wrong with dev packages, but that's not really a valid complaint right there because yeah, when it comes to you in particular, you might not find value in snap packages yourself, but that doesn't mean that your way is the best way. It might be the best way for you, but the technology again exists because there's a very important reason for it to exist. Now, I just told you why I think universal packages are a great idea, but are snap packages good? Are they a good type of universal package? Well, in my opinion, I think the technology around snap packages or the idea behind them is sound. It's a good technology, but unfortunately, snap packages do have legitimate flaws. And I think that's why there's so much confusion around them because some people feel like they're great and other people just hate them and try to find a way to remove SnapD from the system altogether. So that way they could just purge Snap from their computers. Now, some of the problems that I see with snap packages, and you'll see other people complain about this as well, is that you can't have a dedicated or custom app store or repository for snap packages. Canonical kind of has complete control over this, and that's definitely not a good thing. When it comes to Flatpak, for example, you can actually create your very own repository and forego FlatHub completely. FlatHub is the you know most popular repository for Flatpak. And if you want to, you know, like I said, forego that, you can do that. But when it comes to snap packages, well, you really can't. And in my opinion, I think that's a massive downside and gives Flatpak a major benefit. But that's not the only issue when it comes to snap packages. Applications that are snapped, which is kind of like the verb that's used when you create a snap package, you snap a package or snap an application, that application is going to launch very slowly. And it's really annoying. I mean, you could have a really fast computer and then you click on Firefox and it takes minutes to show up for the first time. I mean, that makes your entire system feel sluggish. And the thing is, that's not even a new problem. Snap packages have been out for years now, and for some reason, Canonical has just, well, never fixed this problem. So even though I feel like the technology is good, flawed, but good, I think that the reputation around snap packages is only going to get worse from here, because in the Linux community, when you get a bad reputation on your product, that reputation is very, very, very hard to get rid of. So snap packages having a bad reputation, you know, because Canonical is implementing them before they fix the issues that they have, then I guess that means that snap packages, unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you feel, are going to fail. Now, to be fair, I'm not hoping that Canonical encounters failure. I mean, I would hope that they fix all the problems and make snap packages the best thing ever. But the thing is, with Ubuntu 2204 and the fact that Firefox is a snap package, and now Firefox takes a long time to load, that distribution is going to be used by a lot of people. And a lot of people are going to have a negative experience with snap packages when they realize that Firefox, for example, takes a long time to open up. So in my mind, there's just no excuse whatsoever for Canonical to use snap packages in production at all until they fix these problems. So I feel like even though Canonical has a great idea and a great purpose to create snap packages, They've kind of, well, shot themselves in the foot, and I think they're setting themselves up for failure. So within two years, I predict that they'll sunset snap packages altogether and move everything to flat pack. That's just a personal guess of mine, but based on the fact that reputation, like I mentioned, in the Linux community is really hard to get rid of, and snap packages not only already have a bad reputation, but are going to get a worse reputation once Ubuntu 2204 comes out, which is actually out already by the time you're seeing this edited video, then I think, yeah, there's some definite truth when it comes to snap packages and the fact that people generally don't like them. But again, one of the main complaints about snap packages that you'll see is people are upset specifically because they feel like Canonical is forcing snap packages on them. And that's simply not true. Well, it's kind of true. I mean, Canonical did come up with the technology 
and they did make the decision to roll out snap packages. But again, I feel like the end user, the person that decided to install Ubuntu, they decided that they're okay with that because they decided to use a distribution that has a company backing it. And if you use a distribution that has a company backing it, like I mentioned earlier, then you absolutely need to expect company shenanigans. That's just the way it works. When it all comes down to it, I just don't think it's fair to install Ubuntu knowing that a company backs it and that a company decides the direction of it and then complain that the direction is not going into the direction that you want it to go in when it's not even a full community project in the first place. So at this point, it's become clear that Ubuntu is a good distribution, but it also has some problems, some legitimate problems. Problems that you might not care about on your end, or problems that might mean a lot to you, but problems nonetheless. So in my opinion, overall, my honest opinion is that Ubuntu is a good distribution, but at the same time, it's also a bit chaotic. And in addition to being chaotic, sometimes Canonical makes some really bad decisions. Now, if you take those bad decisions out of the equation and look at Ubuntu for what it is, I think there's a lot of value in this distribution and it's worth taking a look at. For example, when it comes to desktops and laptops, Ubuntu is among the distributions that I feel, from my experience anyway, works the best on laptops and desktops. Ubuntu's hardware compatibility is just the best out of any distribution out there in my tests. The only thing that's better than Ubuntu on laptops and desktops, in my opinion, is Pop! OS. And since Pop! OS itself is based on Ubuntu, then that means anytime Ubuntu implements a new feature that increases compatibility, then Pop! OS also benefits from that as well, and considering that they add their own tweaks on top of that, then Pop! OS is actually, in my opinion, the overall best distribution for laptops and desktops, but you could consider that a main benefit of Ubuntu itself since it laid the groundwork that Pop! OS is built on. Alternatively, you could run Debian on your computer, which is actually a fantastic distribution, but unfortunately, their hardware support is the worst of all desktop distributions out there. They don't include barely any firmware by default, they won't give you your proprietary GPU driver if you need one. You'll have to figure that out for yourself, which means Debian is a lot harder for a lot of people to run than Ubuntu. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to knock Debian itself. It's a fantastic distribution. But since it's a community distribution, and if the community has decided not to facilitate proprietary hardware, well, they're not going to do that, and it is what it is. But anyway, Ubuntu does, in fact, create a very compatible and very fast and stable desktop operating system for your computer, and it's definitely something that I recommend you take a look at. On my end, I run Ubuntu servers in production, so the Ubuntu server distribution is great, at least for my use case, and I have no problem with it. Snap packages aren't something that really impact me anyway, so when it all comes down to it, Ubuntu is actually a great fit for Learn Linux TV in particular. Now, don't get me wrong, if Canonical makes a really bad decision tomorrow, or they're bought out by a company that I don't like, then I'll drop Ubuntu and not think twice about it. Even though I make some money from Ubuntu, like I mentioned, I write books, I'm not actually going to be so biased in favor of Ubuntu that I'm going to force myself to use it. I will stop using it if they make a decision that even I can't go along with. But overall, I recommend that you come up with your own opinion. When it comes to the Linux community, if you're new, then you're probably going to notice that there's a lot of toxicity, a lot of anger, because, well, that's just the way people are. Now, I hope that we're able to change the Linux community and help other people express their opinions in ways that aren't as destructive or insulting towards projects that people work on. But at the end of the day, currently, there's toxicity in the Linux community, and I recommend that you ignore negative complaints about Ubuntu unless you've tried it for yourself and you also agree with those complaints. But don't just take someone's word for it if they say that it's horrible. I mean, it's truly not, because again, it's used a lot. It has a huge footprint, and it's quite possibly the most popular and the most installed distribution of all when it comes to Linux. So I guess what I'm saying is, ignore the hate, try it out for yourself, and see what you think about it, and come up with your own opinion. And when you come up with your own opinion, well, that's valid, because you did the work to find out for yourself whether or not Ubuntu resonates with you. And if you find out that it does, that's great. And if it doesn't, well, that's great too, because there's other distributions out there and you could definitely check them out. Anyway, give me your thoughts down in the comments below. I'd be interested to hear what you guys think about this video. Let's keep it in the spirit of open discussion and not troll each other. We don't want to do that. And we also don't want to actually have some toxicity going on here either. But let's have a constructive discussion about Ubuntu in the comments. I think that's going to be a lot of fun. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please click that like button. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.